is going on, everyone? If you missed it the other day, MMORPG.com did an hour-long interview with Stephen Sharif talking about all things Ashes of Creation, including Alpha 2, new games in the Ashes universe, and much more. And if you don't have a full hour to sit down and hear about the whole live stream, well, I got you covered. If you're a longtime follower for Ashes of Creation, a lot of this info probably won't be new to you, but if you're new to it or casually follow the game, you may learn something new about what's to come. I broke this interview down into a few categories as well. It's not going to be in order of the Q&A video, but starting off we're talking about Unreal 5. Many of you know that Ashes of Creation took the transition from Unreal 4 to Unreal 5 after Alpha 1, with it being announced and shown off for the first time in December. What you may not know though is that the engine comes comes with a lot of new development tools to not only make the game look better and run better, but help speed up the development process of Ashes of Creation as well, with things such as allowing multiple devs to work in the same sub-level at the same time, which prevents bottlenecking of developers that seem to happen a lot with Unreal 4. This seems to be the big feature that's going to help speed up development. A lot of the smaller stuff isn't really talked about yet, but Unreal 5 isn't fully released. I believe it's still in like a preview phase, but anything that gets Ashes in our hands a little bit sooner, I will take. Steven then goes on to talk a bit about the pandemic and the effects that this has had on development as well. Although not all bad, with the start of the pandemic, most major game studios went remote, presenting new challenges and bringing games to life. With Ashes of Creation, there was no exceptions in this. Although Intrepid is moving back into the studio now, it did face some adjustments in the beginning, the biggest being onboarding. Intrepid brought on roughly 30 new associates in 2020-2021 to help work on Ashes of Creation, bringing the total up to more than 120 associates. And all of these new associates had to be trained remotely as there was no in-person work. This can make training more complicated, taking more time to get people up to speed and used to how Intrepid does things, ultimately pushing things back timeline-wise compared to how it would have been if these people were trained in person. On a side note, Intrepid does plan to bring the team up to about 175 associates this year, adding more than 50 devs into the mix of Ashes of creation as we ramp up toward Alpha 2. And you can see on their Twitter that they always have new jobs posting, so if you are interested in joining the Intrepid team, you could check out some of those jobs. Now, you might be thinking 175 associates working on one game may seem like a lot, but MMORPGs are massive projects, and it sounds as though Intrepid has some plans on new games down the road in the Ashes of Creation world outside of the MMORPG genre. So we could very well see a large and in-depth universe Universe being built out of this game down the road. But right now, their primary focus is Ashes of Creation, and then there'll be expansion packs after that, and patches, and all of that good stuff you can expect from an MMORPG. As for Alpha 2, although Steven was very hesitant on when we can expect this next stage of testing, he did talk about what we can expect in it. Alpha 1 was only a 70 square kilometer map, which is being expanded to roughly 220 square kilometers in Alpha 2, being more than three times the size of the Alpha 1 map, giving us just about half of the entire world map that will be at launch. And this world won't be as empty as Alpha 1 either, as you can expect the majority of the systems represented in the game. From nodes to sieging to crafting system and questing, filling up the world with a bit more to do than there was in Alpha 1. This alpha will be persistent up through betas and launch, while giving us different focuses throughout the testing. One weekend could be testing of nodes, another be testing of classes, another testing dungeons or raids, and and so on and so forth. While these servers will remain online and the world continuing to get filled up, there will be very specific testing expected on certain weekends. Obviously, Intrepid will be looking at your general feedback as well, hoping to learn more about node visual appeal, feedback on the server activity as the nodes progress, and cooperation of players when building up specific node buildings, among many other things. Steven also talks a bit about classes and balancing, once again stating that not every encounter is going to feel balanced for your specific build, meaning if you're a healer, you aren't going to be able to take down elite mobs solo as fast or efficiently as someone built for DPS, and some DPS classes may be stronger than others. The game is not meant to be balanced 1v1, as there are 64 classes, and they aren't all going to feel equal to one another. But Intrepid is working to balance around parties, so while you may not be equally matched 1v1 to the opponent on the other side of the battlefield, a 8v8 party will feel more evenly matched with the mixes of various classes at 
their disposal. Steven then goes on to talk about how he's learned from other MMORPGs that he's played and other MMORPGs that have launched recently from development, avoiding to call out New World specifically, but heavily hinting that some of their systems may not function as well as they could, specifically when it comes to territory controls. New World settlement system do seem to be heavily inspired by Ash's nodes, but less thought out and a little more rushed. And one of the big end game components to New World is territory control through the three factions. And one of the things that Intrepid hopes to do well in their similar system being node sieges is to not create a loop of fatigue where players will continually complete these events, making an ever going struggle for the territory, not giving anyone a break or a chance to reap the benefits of controlling these events and therefore making the events not very appealing to the general population of the game anymore. Because if you keep doing the same things over and over and over again, back to back to back to back to try and keep control of your territory or whatever, it's going to get boring and get old real fast. And Intrepid is building systems to prevent this in several ways, such as creating a very intensive quest line that is required to obtain a siege scroll. Siege scrolls will be required to initialize the siege, and this quest line will require many players to participate in to even achieve this scroll. After which, when a war is declared, there will be a declaration period where both parties can prepare for this event. And once the siege is completed, a cooldown from 30 to 60 days, depending on the size of the node, will happen before another siege can take place. If these nodes get abandoned by the players, and Steven believes maybe the system is a little bit broken and the devs will work to alleviate these so you don't run into the issues of abandoned nodes. As nodes control the server and what you get from content, making one node being destroyed and another built have the potential to greatly impact how a server changes. And these systems are designed to hopefully make it so you have some attachment to the node you are part of and don't want to just abandon it to go to another one. Because just because your node has better crafting station doesn't mean another node doesn't have an equal perk that could appeal to a different type of player. Which I think is a lot of issue with New World as there's no restrictions to settlements and you can go craft at any settlement so people are going to migrate to the ones that have the better crafting stations and all of that. Along with this there's some pretty interesting facts that I didn't categorize such as Ashes already having millions of pre-registered users and they aren't even in Alpha 2 yet. Ashes will also only self-publish in the US and EU and reach out to other publishers to assist them with these aspects in other countries. What are your thoughts on the live stream? Be sure to check out the entire thing with the link in the description below. Otherwise, if you're new to Ashes, feel free to sign up using my referral link. Otherwise, be sure to click that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, and stay tuned for a lot more to come.